It's February of 2021, and I was thinking if there's one technology that I wish would become more mainstream this year is unbundled development. So, what is unbundled development? Well, if you're writing React applications or complex JavaScript applications, you're most likely using a bundler like Webpack or Rollup or Parcel. If you're using Create React App, for example, it's using Webpack under the hood. And what these tools do is that they gather all of our modules that we wrote ourselves, like files with import and export statements, plus all of the modules that we NPM installed, then imported, like dozens, hundreds of files, and they put together, bundle in one single JavaScript file or a couple of JavaScript files. And the reason we do that is because browsers, up until recently, they didn't support modules natively. So we had to write in modules because it provides a much better experience for development, but we have to put together in a way that the browsers couldn't, could understand. But the news is, now browsers support JavaScript modules natively. And boy, does it make a difference for development. Because everything is much faster and much snappier. Start times, every time you make a change, even if you're using fast refresh with Webpack, for example, every time you save the file, it has to rebundle everything again. So it's not instantaneous. If you're doing unbundled development, Every time you save a file, the browser only have to update that to refresh to reload that single file. All of the other modules are individually cached, so everything looks instantaneous. To give you an example, here's a small comparison of an app created with Vite. Vite is a tool that helps with unbundled development. I'm gonna talk about it in a second. And on the bottom, I have an application created with Create React App. I'm gonna start both, and as you can see, the Vite version is immediately available, and the Create React App takes some time to start. To, to start. Look, I'm not saying that Create React App or Webpack, for that matter, are bad tools or doing bad job. They're amazing tools, but you just cannot compare with a tool that is just not doing a bunch of work that you're doing. The next question is, why do I need a tool? If the browser now supports modules natively, can't I just feed it my index.js and let it figure out everything that it needs to load? Well, a tool is still going to be useful uh, uh, for a variety of reasons. First, you still need to run local transforms. If you're using JSX, for example, JSX is not something that the browser understands. It needs to be converted to plain JavaScript calls. The second reason is because some NPN packages that you might want to install might not be using ES module system. Here's the thing. Before JavaScript had a standard module system, the community created a bunch of ones. The most famous is CommonJS, which is the module system used by Node. It's still the Node's default option today. So if you, they, they interoperate with ES modules, so you can import, but the browser don't understand them. So one of, another thing that these tools do is converting on the fly any common JS modules or other module formats to ES modules so that the browser can run. The third point is bundling for deployment. Notice that so far I only said unbundled development. The reason is because we're still most likely going to bundle to send to the server. The reason, uh, uh, I could like it's a black hole of reasons. I could make a whole series of videos on why we're still bundling to deploy. But I'll, I'll try to summarize here. First, if you just get a bunch of modules and push the server without any special considerations, you will fall into a waterfall problem. Uh, where your browser will request the first file, the first JavaScript module, start running it, only to realize that that file requires other modules. Then the browser makes new requests, fetches other modules, start reading, realizes that they need more modules, and it goes into this back and forth with the server that takes a lot of time until everything is loaded. This can be solved if your server supports HTTP2. With HTTP2, you can make so that your server, upon the very first requests, talk to the browser, hey, by the way, I know you're gonna need all of these other modules, get, go, go get them over this single connection. And this partially solves the problem, but now there are a, a variety of tiny, small problems and nuisances that together creates a death by a thousand cuts kind of situation. Just to give you an example, uh, one giant JavaScript file compresses better, yields a better compression radio than compressing hundreds of files, even if the content is the same. So for reasons like that, we're still most likely going to continue bundling uh, for the foreseeable feature. So 
talking about tools, which tools are these? There are right now two tools getting popularity in this unbundled scenario. Vite.js, which was created by the same people behind uh, the Vue framework, but it's open not only for Vue, but for React and any, in many other types of JavaScript projects, and Snowpack. These tools, they are very similar. Uh, they have project generators and they are evolving in a very fast pace. It's hard to recommend one over the other because they're changing so often that one feature that one doesn't have in the next iteration, it, it implements that feature. And then it's the other one that doesn't have the feature, but then it implements. So it's going so fast that it's hard to recommend one right now. But one thing that I can talk about is about their different philosophies. I believe that Vite has a more pragmatic philosophy. It's trying to solve today's problems, but in an unbundled fashion. So for example, it, it has a single configuration format that you can use to develop in an unbundled way and to bundle to put into production. Snowpack, on the other hand, it has a philosophy more of innovating in the development uh, uh, area. So it's innovating multiple areas. As a consequence of that, for example, it does allow for multiple ways of deployment, but you have to configure to make an additional configuration. And it also has some crazy experimentation going on. So for example, with Snowpack, uh, you don't have to NPM install. You can just use a library by importing it and it will string install it behind the scenes. It's like really interesting. I have a feeling that uh, over time, Vite is going to, to, to get more popular because of this more pragmatic approach but I cannot say, it's just going to be very exciting to see. Uh, so let me show you really quickly how this project starters uh, work, because both of them have it. To create a new Snowpack-based application, you can do npx create Snowpack, oops, Snowpack app. You provide the name, my app, and a template. Because it works with multiple types of projects, not only React. I'm going to copy and paste here the React, the name of the React template. Let me resize this a little bit. And there you go. It's going to create my Snowpack application. Vite also have an application starter. I run it with npm init vite.js slash app uh, and the app name, my React app, for example. And it's going to show me a menu of possible options. I have React, I have React with TypeScript and it's already there. So yeah, should you create a new application? If you're about to create a new application, should you use these tools? Here's what I say. Um, as I mentioned, they're going through a very fast development cycle right now. And they're most likely going to, to create some, some small changes and, and the API might change a little bit. Uh, Vite is still in beta, create Snowpack, Snowpack is out of beta, but still going through this very active development. So what I would say to you is, if you don't mind having to keep a constant eye and maybe having to tweak your configuration every now and then, then absolutely go for it. Uh, it's going to provide a better experience and they are, I would say they are starting to get mature enough that you can start a new project. But if you don't want to have to take care of that, uh, if you want to just have a solid base because you have work to do, then forget about it for now. Go with Create React app, go with Rollup, go with Parcel, and check it later. All right, so this is it for this video. If you like these videos, please subscribe and see you in the next one.